Okay, I made uh, one personal modification on the rocket stove design that I got from Wendy DeWitt's um, DVD on food storage. It's called Sensible Food Storage. But uh, what I did, we noticed that we needed to have some kind of air, some way for air to get underneath the pan that was on top. And so what I just did is I just measured two inches across and a half inch down, um, and it kind of centered it, and uh, that makes allows us to get air inside, and also holds this down. So if you you know gets knocked over or whatever, you don't lose a lot of vermiculite or whatever your uh, insulating component is inside. So that's uh, one thing I've made. I uh, wanted to update you on that. I'm just ready to get this lit, and I just put some crumpled paper in there that I had sitting around for my office. I've, I've broken up some uh, pieces of wood that I had in my workshop. I didn't have a hatchet so I just used a hammer and a chisel. And now I'm going to get ready to light this and I have vermiculite in here instead of the uh, sand that I got down the street. And I'm going to see uh, what the difference is between the vermiculite and the sand. So. Uh, I recommend you do something as far as getting air underneath the pan that's on top, whether it's bending these down half an inch, uh, these are two inches wide, or whether you drill holes in the sides. It's up to you, but uh, need something to allow air to get in and allow air to get back out. Okay, I've lit the stove and I just dropped some little pieces of wood inside here from the top and uh, now I'm just going to stick some wood here on the sides and uh, I uh, hope that gets all lit up. It, look, it looks good. We've got a nice easy flame. Um, looks like the wind's blowing through here and it uh, should light up pretty well. We've got a nice strong flame here on the rocket stove. I've been a scout master for 19 years and I've blown a lot of air onto uh, fires to get fire started. Uh, this is the second time I've lit this stove and I haven't had a blow anywhere on it. it the, the, the way that it's designed with the air coming in underneath and coming out, it just works really, really well as far as uh, starting itself up. One half piece of paper, as I um, regular 8.5 by 11, I stuffed in the top, threw some twigs in the top, uh, in the top to let it. Once that got started, then I started putting uh, wood here on the end and the fuel uh, entrance here and it's just doing a great job. I'm taking it over the top here so you can see um, how it's going. There we go. Nice, nice flame in there. I do have a tendency I think to put too much wood in but uh, just uh, see what works best for you and uh, you'll get great, great heat. So on this I'm, I'm actually testing the difference the thermal capabilities of the vermiculite versus the sand. Uh, of course, sand is free. Uh, certainly, the vermiculite is a lot less, uh, it's a lot lighter than the sand. And uh, I'm just going to let this heat up here for a few minutes and then feel the side here, of course, with the back of my hand, and see if the vermiculite is a better insulator. Flame is really going well right now. I've got the entrance pointed towards what I think is the um, prevailing wind, but it's, I'm in the back of my house and so it's kind of swirling. But uh, just a really good flame coming out of that uh, rocket stove. One of the bonuses I found is that as the wood burns and falls down towards the bottom, it creates ch a charcoal and it actually. Uh, keeps the the stove heated even when the flame is out uh, probably 45 minutes or longer after the uh, or maybe even an hour after the uh, the flame had gone out I put my hand over the stove and it was still producing quite a bit of heat so that was really nice if you want to simmer your food uh, and not have to worry about a lot of uh, using up a lot of fuel I just have fallen in love with this little rocket stove. It's cheap. It's, uh, in other words, it didn't cost me anything because I just got the cans for free. Uh, it took me 30 minutes to build. It produces great heat, uh, just with a few little sticks, uh, and uh, it 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 keeps uh, the food or it keeps producing heat well after the flame is gone. So, uh, highly recommend building a rocket stove 
It's the most fun I've had for free in a long time. Here we are down low. Uh, hopefully you can see the flaming going on inside there. You can see the coals down at the bottom. Uh, nice red hot coals that are producing heat. And then the, the wood at the top that's burning. And then it'll drop down. Uh, just a great design. Um, excellent for preparedness. Uh, for prepping for any kind of situation or just uh, if you just want to have a low impact and just grab some twigs, uh, roast some marshmallows, uh, heat up some water, uh, use some, uh, this would be very easy to use inside of my house, in my chimney, in my uh, fireplace. Uh, so uh, it's, a, it's a great, great setup. Okay, so I just uh, just briefly touched the, the side of the can with the back of my fingers, and it is uh, to me it feels substantially hotter than uh, using the sand I got down from the down the end of the street. So in my experience, the sand was a, a better insulator than for the vermiculite. This is, I think, a lot hotter than when I had the sand in there, but the. You do your own testing, see what works best for you. Uh, another thing is sand is free. Hope you can see this. The uh, flame is completely out, but uh, hopefully you can see the charcoal just glowing in there, uh, providing heat for quite a while. No flame, but a lot of heat coming out. Well, I hope this uh, informational do-it-yourself video on how to make a rocket stove has been helpful. I hope that you actually take uh, a few minutes and have some fun, get out some tin snips, some scrap uh, wood or some twigs, a, couple, a few cans, number 10 can and some soup cans, and uh, make yourself a rocket stove and go outside and have some fun.